Hello, welcome back to Ask a Monk. Next question comes from Rolisk, who asks, How should one go about fixing on and properly letting go of past, present, and future phenomena, especially events or people who have had a huge impact on your mind? The, the one thing about Buddhist, about Buddhist practice and the path that we're on that has to be um, understood, has to be emphasized again and again, uh, is that it's a gradual teaching. There are people who are really ready to become enlightened and, and with just a little push they're able to uh, let go, they're able to free their minds. But that's because of the immense... Uh, work that they've done uh, in 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 past lives in their past they're 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 in a different uh, on a different plane so to speak um, if if you still have these these really strong attachments which, which most of us do and in fact most of our problems um, are, are are of this nature then you have to you have to have patience you have to be able to see it as a long term um, practice of 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 changing really the the core of who you are you have to see that the mind is much much more complex deep um, and 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 messed up really uh, then, then we realize that when you first start practicing, it seems quite simple, and it is quite simple. You're dealing with very raw emotions, very coarse and crude um, mental problems that we have. You know, very intense states of hatred, intense states of addiction, intense states of of ego and delusion and and, and ignorance and so on. Um, but as you go on, the the objects of your attachment, both positive and negative attachment are not going to change necessarily they're going to um, become weaker the, the attachment is going to become weaker so dealing with uh, the, the very strong issues in our life um, it has to go in stages and the first stage is knowing that we're going to be in this for the long haul not expecting a quick fix because Quick fixes are usually the the um, they're what uh, what what destroys a person. If a person gets involved, gets into drugs, gets into medication, even uh, it's it's really what ends your spiritual life. A person on medication has a very difficult time uh, on the spiritual path, and so even the most difficult, like for instance, people who have uh, schizophrenia. Some people have asked me. I don't think I've gotten to these questions yet. Uh, and and I, I'll try my best to. Uh, people with these, you know, these, these are problems that probably can't be totally sorted out because in many ways they're organic and have to do with the structure of the brain uh, on the one hand. Um, so we can look, but we can really look at all of our problems in this way that, that we may not work them all out even in this lifetime. Yeah, that That's just the fact. There's nothing you can do about that. It may be that you're not going to solve all your problems even in this lifetime. Um, now, that being said, uh, I, th I think this leads people, this sort of teaching leads people to get lazy. On the other hand, uh, that we should work to our to our to our uh, the best of our ability to get rid of these things as quickly as possible. The Buddha said, as though your head were on fire or you were. Um, you you were uh, shot with an arrow. You should you know what what should you do if your head if you, if your if your hair is on fire? What should you well put it out as quickly as possible. If you're shot with an arrow, what arrow? What should you do? Pull it out as quickly as possible. Uh, you know th there's no hesitation. There's no saying well I'll you know it's okay. It might take a while for this to heal. So why pull it out right away or so? I mean pull it out and then you know your hair your head is on fire right? What what are you waiting for? Uh, the Buddha said in the same way we should work to get rid of our wrong views uh, and, and this is an interesting teaching as well because this is the second um, stage the first stage is, is realizing 
know, not having having expectations that we should somehow be able to, as you say, fix on and let go. It, it doesn't really work that way. You you can't just say, okay, ah, I I understood that situation. Uh, and this happens with meditators. They go on a retreat for ten days, twenty days, even a month, and they think, wow, you know, I really you know got rid of all those defilements. And then they go back to 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 life and and defilements come right back. All of the same defilements come back. And this can be quite discouraging because they think, well, then I gain nothing from the practice. But the point is, what you, what you gain, uh, on the one hand, you gain, um, you know, the, the, the defilements are lessened. And this is the point about um, th that they're not going to go away all at once. You, you can't address a problem and say it's finished because it's going to come back, but next time it will be weaker, your attachment to it will be weaker. And you, you'll find this over the years, that you have the same attachments, the same addictions, the same aversions, the same uh, angers, and they're all just as they were before, but, uh, but weaker. And they don't have as much as, of a hold on you until they're finally done away with. But one thing that changes for sure, um, usually through intensive practice, but it can a change through gradual, um, through daily practice. But definitely I recommend the best thing for you to do is to undertake an intensive meditation course. That's the best way to get started on the Buddhist path from my point of view. That's how I started. I didn't learn anything. I didn't study. I didn't really know hardly anything about Buddhism and I went to practice meditation. I think it was a good, good, uh, uh, good, uh, good luck for me. Uh, because I didn't have any preconceived notions, and I went in and I just learned uh, and and came out with with some you know some direct understanding uh, you know, to to whatever extent. Um, so the, the one thing that does go away if you do this, if you undertake intensive practice and and if you're diligent in it, is wrong view. And this is so. This is the Buddha said we should work hard to get rid of. He didn't say we should work to get rid of our greed and anger right away but he said get rid of your wrong view your wrong understanding and this is the wrong understanding in regards to these problems that it's me uh, that I was hurt that I was injured that uh, this person now you, you'll have thoughts about things you're talking specifically about something that happened in the past you'll have a thought about that and there's this this big you know like a car crash that happens in your mind and and you put that together as a person, the other person and me, and then and, and you feel all sorts of guilt and maybe ego and self-righteousness or, or whatever. Uh, you can feel jealousy, you can feel so many different emotions. But they all come from this uh, attachment to, and it, not, not all, but, but many of them only come after uh, the attachment to it as, as me, as, as I was hurt by this person or I hurt this person or uh, this you know th this person is gone someone who we loved who's passed away who's left who's changed who's, uh, so on um, uh, once we can let go of this idea of self this idea that that it was me and even the idea that that situation somehow exists because that's really it right we we believe this situation somehow is an entity you know this problem. I I can't stop thinking about this person, that person, what they did to me, or or the time, the great times we had, or so on. Uh, you realize instead that it's simply a thought that arises in the mind. That when you're thinking about the past, there, there there's no past. The past doesn't come up. All that there is is a thought in your mind, and then there are several powerful emotions that could arise. It could be anger. It could be greed. Um, and so those those often will come up automatically, but once you put once you put the, the the view on it that you know oh I you know you have this this attachment to it as as my experience and as as an experience, then you'll come up with all these things about how you know I miss this person and and oh I love them and oh they were then the idea of them and they they were so great to me or they were so awful to me and 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 so on, so. Uh, instead of thinking it as thinking of it as the experience in the past, some some entity, you know, think of it as what is going on right now. There is the um, there is the thought process, and there is the emotive process. There is the physical sensations that come along with that headaches or or 
the fast beating heart or the tension or so on uh, th that that goes along with it uh, this is the first the the first real change that occurs and and the first step really in in affecting a change uh, if if you can work on getting rid of this uh, it's much more important work on changing the way you look at the situation to simply see it as arisen desires, arisen aversions, then whenever it comes up, it's not going to stick. It, you know, you you get angry, you get you get um, greedy, or you 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 longing for the past, or so on, longing for the future, angry or worried or scared, or so on, and it goes away. You don't think of it as I. You don't think of it as a problem. Uh, you don't give rise to this um, worry and this stress. What am I going to do about this? Once you identify with it, then it becomes your problem. It's something you have to deal with. But if you see it simply for what it is, this is why we have these, this mantra that we use, right? If you, if you are angry, you say to yourself, angry. If you're worried, you say, I'm worried, worried. Because it changes the way you look at it. It, it gets rid of that nonsense of I and, and, and the attachment and the identifying. And it's simply something that has arisen. Oh, you know, there's anger. You know, and then it's just anger. And it's coming and coming and coming and then it's gone. And if you can practice in this way, you'll eventually realize that that's really it. It just came and went, and then it arises this so what, that, that the, and you let go. You have no reason to, to worry or to cling uh, to the situation at all. And that's when it starts to recede, uh, when you stop giving it, um, giving it power, when you stop feeding it and you stop uh, re reifying you know, the situation where the, the tension and stress comes up and you identify with it and you say, yes, 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 I'm, I'm tense and stress, you know, the terrible anger, and you, you reify it. You know. There was anger that came up, you, you apply more anger on top of it. You say, yes, yes, I'm so angry about that. And then it goes back down and, and it will come again and get worse and worse and worse. And you do the opposite. Now once you start to get bored of it and you start to see, yeah, there's anger. Okay. Oh yeah, anger. And you start to realize, hmm, you know, this is this is what I've developed over the years and this is this has a cause, you know, it, it's it's because of my reifying and so on. And you know, it's not that realization that is that's important. What's important is just realizing it is what it is. It's just anger. Once you see that, that you know, you were just all you were doing before is, is reifying it and, and magnifying it then you, you don't do that anymore. You see that that's the wrong way and you just watch it. And once you are able to start watching it, then it will slowly, slowly go away. Uh, so what I'd like to stress is that, one, it's, it's not going to go away overnight, not likely. If it does go overnight, then it's going to take one uh, intense night of meditation. And I don't, don't, don't try that. <laughs> but for some people it's possible that they might be able to, to realize the truth. It, it can happen very quickly, uh, at least this stage of realizing the, the, the difference, uh, realizing the, the, our wrong uh, understanding. Once we realize that you know, we're looking at things wrongly, we're, we are reifying, we're um, creating an identity, uh, and we're attaching and, and identifying with the experience. And when we're able to, to see reality, as simply arising and ceasing. This can happen quite quickly um, and you know, it, it leads to um, an experience of, of freedom and it takes your mind to another level. After that then it's just simply a matter of time as you work to uh, slowly, slowly untangle the, the attachments and, and uh, as they slowly, slowly go away by themselves um, and uh, through through practice are worked out, and then the knots are untied, and so on. Uh, so understanding that first of all that it's not going to go away quickly, and second of all understanding that the most important is not to get rid of our strong emotions, but to change the way we look at them instead of reifying and identifying with them, um, seeing them for simply as emotions, simply as realities that have arisen and will cease. Yeah, that they come and go, that clinging to them is not uh, going to satisfy, is not going to bring happiness or, or resolution, that 
you can't fix it you can't um, you know there's no nothing you can do to make it better or to uh, to to uh, set up some state of existence state of being that's going to be perfect um, realizing that it's out of your control it's not something that is uh, that is stable and lasting and and uh, controllable and when you're able, when you do that you, you you start to let go you start to see that this is not a process or or a um, system that is worth getting involved in and so you let go of these attachments and, and that happens slowly so okay so so basically two things and I hope that was clear um, thanks for the questions all the best